From the top of the Roskostrach building on Northern Avenue to the republics of Armenia and Gharapag and beyond. This is Civil Nets Daily News Digest. I'm Paul Chadurjian. And I'm Maria Titizian. In today's Digest, frustrated and forgotten, residents whose homes were taken away want answers. Plus, the two minute exchange that went viral, now the fallout. And what's to be done about Armenia's population issues? And later, printing the can do attitude that's bound to inspire. One of the oldest neighborhoods in downtown Yerevan continues to be embroiled in controversy. Gond is located atop one of the hills that make up the city. A government decision seized 175,000 square meters of property and 120 homes in the neighborhood and paved the way for a private company to develop the area. A handful of former residents who were removed from their homes to make way for construction of the first building gathered outside the presidential residence on Thursday to complain that they've been forgotten. The residents were promised new homes at equal value to their property in a new building plus an allowance of $150 a month to be used towards rent until their new homes were ready. Yesterday the residents told the president's staff that they hadn't received their stipends and their new homes aren't ready. After four floors of the new construction was built, construction stalled. The residents are worried about their future. After a 90 minute meeting with the presidential staff, the residents were unhappy with what they heard and walked to the parliament building to talk to their representatives. Other redevelopment plans in Kond haven't been announced yet. Reactions continue to opposition parliamentarian Zari Postanjan's exchange with President Serge Sarkisian at the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg, France, on Wednesday. During a question and answer session, Postanjan said the president was not rightfully elected and then went on to ask if it was true that he had lost 70 million euros gambling in a European casino. Reaction to what some are calling a shameful and absurd exchange has ranged from kudos for Postanjian to rage at her airing the country's dirty laundry in the heart of Europe. One thing is clear, the real issues that should be on the national agenda have been temporarily sidetracked by Postanjian's question to the Armenian president at pace. Here are some reactions from Twitter. Kara Leva blog says, finally there is a person, Zari Postanjian, who is not afraid to speak the truth. And Mardirosian Sam's tweets. Hovik Aprahamian says Zarui to be excluded from Armenia delegation. Daddy Serge is angry. And some reactions on Facebook. Lily Magarian writes pedestrian issues about internal affairs like this should not be discussed outside, let alone in Europe. In the meantime, Armenians living in France staged a three day protest against President Ser Sarkisian. The protesters gathered for their sit-in outside the PACE building in Strasbourg. A spokesperson for the activists say French Armenians are disappointed with the president's announcement that Armenia will not sign the European Union Association Agreement, but instead will join the Russian Customs Union. Yesterday, Armenia's Speaker of the National Assembly, Hovik Aprahamian, announced that Zari Postanjan will be removed from the PACE delegation. Aprahamian said that freedom of speech is a universal right and it is a necessary condition for the institutionalization of democracy. However, expressing a political opinion is not an absolute right. He said that Article 66 of the Armenian Constitution underscores this. The article reads, quote, a deputy, during and after the term of his or her parliamentary powers, may not be prosecuted and held liable for actions arising from his or her status, including the opinions expressed by him or her in the National Assembly, provided these are not insulting or defamatory. Prime Minister Dikran Sarkisian was on the hot seat in Yerevan on Wednesday during a question and answer session in Parliament. The Prime Minister fielded questions from members of Parliament Opposition MP Aram Manukyan said that he had been requesting a copy of the agreement between Russia and Armenia's two natural gas companies, Gazprom and Amrus Gazprom, for the past several months. Mr. Sarkisian responded by saying that there is in fact no signed agreement between the two companies, that the companies are still negotiating and when the final agreement is signed it will be made public. It is important to note that on July 1st, the government applied to the Public Service Regulatory Commission to increase natural gas prices, citing an increase in Russian natural gas. 
All of this happened without an existing legal document or an agreement between the Armenian and Russian sides. In Parliament on Thursday, President Sarkisian's request to pardon citizens under an amnesty declaration was approved by a majority vote by the National Assembly. It is believed that ANC activist Dikran Arakelian, who has been in prison for the past two years and two months, may be set free as part of this amnesty. Garik Harabetyan, Armenia's assistant representative to the United Nations Population Fund, was in our studio yesterday. He spoke to Maria about the demographic situation in Armenia. The demographic situation is worrisome in Armenia because we have all three uh, indicators of demographic situation worsening. That said, are, they are the fertility rate decreased almost twice uh, after the independence. That's the uh, high level of migration, and that's also aging, as you very uh, rightly mentioned. And all three indicators are giving us uh, thought, uh, the thought that we have to be worried and we have to act. Hayr Abedian also talked about the upcoming conference on demographic challenges in the Republic of Armenia. That'll take place early next week in Yerevan. CivilNet will be live streaming the conference on Tuesday, October 8th. Everything you need to know about Wiki projects is about to be discussed this weekend in Yerevan. As you know, Wiki is a website which allows contributors to add and edit material. And this weekend at the American University of Armenia, Wiki Conference Yerevan 2013 will focus on helping people develop and promote Wiki projects. Speakers are slated to offer advice on how to use Wiki sites to offer free knowledge and promote the open network culture in Armenia and neighboring regions. Wiki editors will also share their experiences and knowledge with one another. Freedom House, the independent watchdog organization that monitors freedom around the world, has just issued its latest report on freedom on the Internet. The organization identified key trends in Internet freedom in 60 countries and evaluated each country based on obstacles to access, limits on content, and violation of user rights. Armenia ranked 17th in the category of free nations, while Georgia ranked 12th and Ukraine at 16. Turkey, Russia and Azerbaijan were ranked as partially free at 38th, 39th and 41st respectively. On CivilNet today, we took you inside a printing shop called Zart Print that was created by two physically disabled people, Zara and Ardag. Today, the shop provides all kinds of printing services, including printing in Braille, the first of its kind. As part of their vision, they provide employment for others with disabilities. You can watch their story by following the link on your screen. Starting today through Tuesday at the Garen Demirchan Sports and Concert Complex, it's the Indian Products Expo and Marketplace. Companies from India will showcase their products, including handicrafts, clothing, jewelry, textiles, furniture, and other consumer goods. According to the Foreign Ministry, between January and August of 2012, exports from Armenia totaled $1 million. Imports totaled around $40 million. Armenia's exports include precious and semi-precious stones, copper and copper products, aluminum and chemicals. Imports include meat products, tea, rice, precious metals, medicines, textiles, jewelry, industrial products, plastics and linoleum, and electrical appliances. Filmmaker Nikol Bezjan's latest documentary, Milk, Carnation and a Godly Song, will premiere at the Beirut International Film Festival this weekend, Sunday, October the 6th. Nikol was a guest on CivilNet's Global Armenians program a few weeks ago and talked about his film, which is a three-hour exploration of one of Armenia's greatest poets, Daniel Varujan. A 24-minute clip of the film is on a constant loop through the end of the year at the Thessalonica Biennial in Greece. Bezjan's already working on his next documentary about the Sufi mystic and poet Rumi. And Southern California fashion designer Viken Derderian spoke to CivilNet today about the collection he displayed on the runway at the Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week in New York City. Um, I've always wanted to stay kind of rooted in fine arts and design and kind of a theoretical kind of world of, of design. So I tried various things. Um, I also, you know, paint, fine art, do fine art as painting and things like that. So I try to go to where the ideas are. 
and uh, I guess in 2008, when the market kind of fell apart, I looked at my options, and going back to school was a big one, and the opportunity came up to do fashion. And before that, I always had an interest in fashion, but I had never actually attempted, nor did I know how to sew or do any of that stuff. So I decided, you know, give it a shot. Let's see what happens. And it turned out I made it to New York Fashion Week. Vikan is also an architect, and his unique blend of both art forms have prompted media to call him a fashion trendsetter. Congratulations, Vikan. That's our digest for this Friday, October 4th. We want to hear from you. Our email address is english at civilnet.am. Have a great weekend.